It's always good to get out in the field in the fall, even as things are winding up. There's still a lot of activity here in Central Illinois. Michael Schmidt, fifth generation owner of Central Illinois Ag. Michael, thanks for taking a few minutes. We're all smiling again. The new combine's out in the field. You got another brand new production unit. Talk a little bit about what you've learned with this new combine here over the last, I would say, year of using it. So the biggest thing is just the easiness of getting this machine in the field, getting it set up. We literally have done nothing but adjust the concave clearance. Uh, we've put about uh, 20 separator hours on this machine now, and we've made no adjustments to it except the concave clearance. You know, Michael, you and I talked about this last year. One of the biggest things that I've noticed with this combine, yes, everybody gets excited about the volume uh, and the talk of efficiency. It's how clean that grain seal. <laughs> Funny you say that. I just got out of the cab, and the customer's like, this is way too clean. We're going to the elevator. I said, I don't know how to dirty it up. Um, you Literally, you don't mess with anything. This thing's got two complete cleaning systems in it, two clean grain augers in it. It's adjusting off of air pressure on the sieves. We do nothing to it other than just drive it. And whether we're going four miles an hour or six, it's adjusting to us as we go. Nothing really seems to face it. A lot of conversation about twin rotor and single rotor. Certainly in corn, the added link to that rotor makes this a corn eating machine. Yeah, so 8260s are four modules long. AF combines are six modules long. We have no rotor loss. Uh, we have no issue getting the corn off the cob, getting it down through those the, the threshing modules. So you got a lot of people that watch the, the our tech segments, and a lot of farmers have two combines in corn. I think from what I've noticed this year and last, I think that's the real advantage to this combine is we can displace two combines for one really easily because you're up in that 6,000 bushel an hour number. Where are you seeing that for productivity when you put a big head on it? Yeah, so we're running a 16 row gearing off, folding, chopping corn head on it. Uh, we liked the case head last year, but we wanted a folding one. Um, right now we're running anywhere between five and 6,500 bushels an hour. Um, it's a brand new combine, so I've really we're not quote unquote pushing it just yet. Um, customers very happy at six thousand bushels an hour. We have two auger carts running, about four semis right now hauling corn, and that's letting us keep the machine moving. Um, but it's amazing how quickly we eat through these acres. You know what I found interesting is this demo last year. You see demos from lots of case dealers across the country. You've had demos out even this year. <clears throat> this one's not a demo. This one is not a demo. This one is mine. Uh, Central Noy Ag, we ordered this one. This is a full production unit. It's not a pre-build. Um, there is a PIP. We know there's going to be a couple of them for 2026. Uh, we're already talking to the case guys out in Grand Island about what we're going to do at the end of the season. Uh, nothing is, is going to impede what we're able to do out in the field right now. I mean, I tried to dumb this one down. We just went with the twin disc spreader and the manual dump rock trap. That's about as simple as you can make this combine. Otherwise, it's all automated. It's got all the bells and whistles in it. Uh, we're actually running on AFS3 correction out here with this customer. They planted on RTK. No row guidance feeler. And we're literally running down the road, just nudging left or right a couple inches. And it's doing a beautiful job. So am I right in thinking that the place for this combine really is going to be for that guy that, that has enough acreage, has enough grain handling, that he consistently runs two combines all day, most of those in the industry are class eights, and he can really displace two class eights in. Right. I'd really think so. Just take an average Central Illinois guy, five to six thousand acres. They've got 50 50 corn soybeans, and the problem is that they really don't need two in corn, but they have two for beans, so they run two in corn. When they do that, it's, it's expensive. The other operator for hours. Yes, this combine has a premium price tag. But if we can go to one combine in corn that frees up an operator, maybe have the older machine then to catch up the beans so you can go cut beans. But you know, we were running a 50-foot graper the other day at 80 bushel beans at six miles an hour. I mean, it's just an acre eater when you do that. It's very efficient. Well, I love all the conversations because I think you've done a good job, even in the demos, is understand it's you're not both of these every No. This is a keep it under warranty, three years minimum, and, and let the combine go do what it's good at saving some labor and being super efficient. You know, I'm in my mid-50s, and I remember when we got our first rotor combine from Reeds and Henry in 78, and I went, what's a rotor? Because everything had a cylinder. We 
when you went to Rotary, you're like, wow, this is a generational combine. And behind our backs here, on the video click again, there's two conventional rotors running right back here. Yep. This combine here, I like to think is generational. What I mean by that is your bulls, you got a whole bunch of them. They're going to be dealing with this combine 20 years from now. Yeah, so the, the customer we're at today is they're, they're, they're mid 40s, same age as I am, good friends of mine, been farming forever with their dad. Um, and when they took over the farm, they've grown the operation. They've needed two big combines. Um, they've got their boys are the same age as my boys. And so they're, I really think that this is one of those combines that they're going to be able to, to purchase. Maybe it won't be this year, but in the next couple of years, they'll put one of these in their operation. And it's what their boys are going to take over with. And whether they grow the operation or not, it's just, you're right, it is definitely going to be a combine for the generations. Well, the thing that I find so interesting, even on the flagship combines, and really any combine, prior to the last four or five years, you needed an operator. And I mean an operator more than just steering it. I'm talking about making sure that sample's right, adjusting during the day. It's tougher in the morning cut beans. It's, you know, easier running at noon, and then it gets harder in the day. And corn varieties, right? We're taking in more trash. I'm like, well, all the things that happen when you run a combine. The thing about this combine to me that is just, I don't want to say mind numbing, but until you've sat in the chair, is how easy it is to go, oh, I'm going to put it in corn. And I don't care what variety it is. I don't care if you're in 30% corn or 14. That sample's fine. Yeah. And that's that's hard to fathom for a lot of people probably watching this video. If you don't believe us, go get in one. Yeah. Go find your case IH or your New Holland dealer and get in the cab and go prove us wrong. Yeah. We've we've got a, I've got a customer friend from Southern Illinois. Um, he wants to come up and see it. Uh, we've got actually have two guys from Australia that are here in the U.S. that are driving up from Memphis, Tennessee this morning. Uh, they're going to be out in the field with us here later today. Uh, people want to see what this thing is capable of doing. Are they going to make a decision today? I doubt it. But are they going to be looking at what is coming down the future for their farm and what their operation is? And it's a whole infrastructure thing. You just don't go buy one of these and then be like, well, we're going to figure out how we're going to get rid of it. You, you've got to be making some plans and, and being ready for this type of machine. I totally agree. I mean, it's got you got two carts out here running, and you, and you need it. Yep. And, you know, I think it's pretty safe to say you and I were talking off camera. I'd love to think maybe you can get away with a 12-row head, but I just I don't know. I, it seems to me like you're going you're gonna to be running so fast that we all know you're, you take a corn head and you run it north of five miles an hour, you're going to have some chance. Yeah, and, and maybe not so much at fourteen percent corn or fifteen, or whatever. How dry is this corn? I think it's fifteen or fifteen and a half. Maybe okay, that's premium running. Yes, but you get heavier stuff. Cornheads don't like speed; they right. never have. You, you got to have time to get the trash through the head. Yeah, and running the cornheads faster—that's not always the answer. So really, you got to think. I need a sixteen row head. I mean, that's I, I think so. And there's no. Use. I think when you get to this class of combine, you have to be thinking the forty foot wide corn head. Um, I just talked to a friend of mine down in Southern Illinois. They've got an AF-10 they just put out yesterday with a 12-row, and he said, we're just driving too fast. Yeah, I, I mean, I, we'll, we're, we'll run four and a half to five and a half miles an hour. We're just comfortable at that speed. We're unloading on the go, but we're still doing 6,000 bushels an hour. That crazy? It is nuts. Yeah. It is nuts. I really want to see, I'm hoping that at the end of today, now that we're open up and running, right. I really hope that we're going to see a 54 to 5,500 bushel an hour average for the day. It's one thing to say you ran 7,000 bushels an hour. It's another thing to really do it. I mean, it's the best I've ever seen is like last year, I think we had a couple days where we averaged 5,500 bushels an hour. And we were pushing it. I mean, that's just your pushing. Well, and I think a lot of that conversation, I didn't think about your life below Bozy. I think a lot of that conversation is what you're talking about. It's understanding how you plug this in and where does it really work at? Right. Does it work at saving you one guy? Okay, but that's one less machine to service and maintain and all that. Obviously, we need to do this in order. I think that's the best. Yeah, and that's where I've always, I've always wanted to do this. The manufacturer has the labels. That's why I'm out here today. Um, but we've also now, I've had three or four of my sales guys, decision army specialists. I didn't even get in the combine in the first demo we did the other day. So, and I didn't even do it. Didn't get in it at all. Okay. Well, I think that's part of the combine success. I hope is, you know, there's so many people that have not been in this machine. That's that's first of all. 
saw it at the Farm Project for the last few years, and you probably watched the video of you and I talking about it while I was here. And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But until you sat in the chair, you can go take the average operator, the new salesman, yep. and put him in this without any reservation. You yeah. couldn't do that five to five years ago. Well, and, and I'm very lucky that I've got a great relationship with the case guys. We actually did all of the rework from the 24 model to the 25 um, that we ran last year. And I, my mechanics were tired of working on it. But I said, guys, you, you now have seen the guts of this combine. And so it's it, we've got a great learning experience there. So we ought to be in good shape. We need to so we're going to save this for last. So before we started recording this video, if you bought this combine, think about what it's called. Easy math. You're going to be somewhere about 900 or so for the F2. 280, 250s now, you're probably, or 80, 260s, you're probably somewhere around 600. So it's not quite two for one, but it's, you're, you're close. But that's, that's the next conversation. See, I can save some labor. You know, do you need a folding head on this? The, the travel is great. I mean, the combine is smooth as can be for that 16 year old. Longer wheelbase. Yeah. Not for well, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but people on the road are not very smart. They don't know what to do when they come to the um, both, all three customers this week, and, and even last year, we talked about, okay, if you've still got that second comp, 82, 30, 40, 50, whatever it may be for beads, maybe you have an old 12-row folding head, and it just goes ahead and opens up end rows, gets you in the field. Um, and that's, these guys were just talking about when they had mornings where they couldn't cut beads early. Well, they went and opened up acres on the end rows and got the fields ready. He said, we'll hold back in and knock them out in a hurry. Well, I was with a guy earlier this week, and you know, he had a 20-foot platform just just to go around because he's got 45-foot platform. Yep. And he goes, it's so nice. He goes, just to pull in and go. He goes, and you know what? We don't see him all day because he's gone. He's got one semi, and he goes opening up the field. He goes, he yep. goes we have an extra machine. Why not? You know, and it's a 80,000. It's not a 70,000. So what would you tell guys, Michael, if uh, – you know, you got guests coming in from Australia and from all over to look at this combine. What do you tell a guy that's watching this video that's skeptical about it? Go get in one. Talk to your dealer. You've got to have confidence in that. Uh, step one. This is not a machine that I'm going to sell three or four hours from home because I know what the expectation of that customer is going to be at this level. And they're not trading everything. No. That's not enough. I don't believe so. I, I don't believe so. Well, I look forward to getting in the cab. Any, nothing's really different from last year's, right? No, no. Uh, there isn't. I believe there's probably a new cab in the works coming down the pipe. Uh, what year that happens, I'm not really sure. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot of room up on the front of that combine. And then don't worry, Case H goes on. <laughs> hey, it's got a new monitor. It does. The 212 monitor is awesome. awesome. Come on. Looking great. That's that's a big plus. Well, they didn't put the Pro 1200, or the, what was the one before that? Pro 700. They didn't put a Pro 700. Well, and like yesterday, we ran it with a John Deere customer that runs John Deere Ops Center. Well, we put it in our field ops account, and Matt Barling got his username and login, and he just moved the data over from field ops to ops center. So when you can do that, that's a game changer right there for, for mixed fleet wow. operations. We're still working on it all the time, but it's, we're getting close. Well, Michael, thank you so much. It's always fun to talk about this because, you know, but to be honest with you, we'll probably be in Cornfield next year to talk to you about this. This isn't, this isn't something that's just going to show up. There's just, there's so much to unpack. You know, and every farmer you take this to is still an amazement. Yeah, it, it, it's going to take most of it. If you have not had this machine in your farm, in your hands, or been around it a bunch, you don't understand the infrastructure you're going to have to have. You know, we were laughing. Uh, we've got a customer that bought a bagger. We were talking about it yesterday. And he's like, it's the greatest thing ever. I don't wait on trucks. He said, the auger carts just go up and dump. And then, so we're literally across the road over here. There's a guy running. There isn't a truck in the field, but he's got his bagger and his auger cart. And I'm not so sure that that's not a viable option, too. Um, you know, you're, you're going to spend millions of dollars on a grain system. Maybe a couple hundred thousand on the bagging system isn't a better a better move. Well, I think all these conversations about equipment are, are still about evolution. Remember the moment everybody had auger heads. 
And then the Draper came out and you realized if you farm, and that's still true today. If you farm, you and I've done this. If you farm north of six or 800 acres of soybeans and you don't have a Draper, get a pencil out because that'll pencil to go find yourself a nice Draper because you're going to save three or four bushel of an acre. And I think this combines that same conversation. I think you're making a decision about this, not necessarily at the dealer. You're making it at home at the kitchen table with mom and dad because, hey, we can have one less guy. We don't need an, an, an A operator in here. We need to get the we need to get five thousand bushel an acre out of it, five thousand bushel out, out of the field. How do we do that? Today we do it with two class eights. Right. That costs X. And well, we roll them every year. And, and, and the grain loss, God love our, our red combines are super simple to set. But there are days where the grain loss is is more than you want it to be. Right. And we did it again yesterday and the day before. Our grain loss behind this combine is just fifty percent better than the flagship. And the customer we were with yesterday had got a John Deere combine as well. And it, you go over and but it's, it's I, just better. I would tell you too, it's patience. Yeah. And nobody has any of it in the fall. And that means if you've got whatever brand of combine it is, and you can physically run it because you have the horsepower in the trucks to harvest at four miles an hour. But at three, you you have half the grain loss, guys will still run it. Well, guess what? In this combine, you can just run it however hard you want to run it because the grain loss is never going to be the issue. No one's going to be. Yeah. The automation really works well in this AF combine. The technology that's there, the algorithm that they've come up with is is a lot better than the 250, 260s. Um, the 260 is fantastic. It's awesome. But the, this is just Well, amazing. and I remember when automation first came out and I was working with Case at the time and I was like, wow, this is great. Well, it had to be because you needed the combine to make actually make adjustments. So in that mid part of the day or in the evening, you weren't throwing it out of the back because you're on the cell phone yeah. and you weren't paying attention. And all of a sudden, your your grain loss monitors are coming up. Here, oh, dang it. You got yeah. That's not. And I mean, it is. That is not even a conversation. Well, we quit <laughs> yesterday and the rotor was running 380. That's we started true. this morning and the rotor was running running 280. Yeah. Now, it's we've dried out this morning. We have a little do, not much. But now we're back running 330 or 40, and it's amazing to see that machine make that change just because of that. 90% of my questions on automation come in the morning. I quit last night. It was perfect, and now it's acting up. Well, it, it, the moisture came in. It's just a little bit different. Give it an hour or two. And I found with automation, it, it's, it's pretty good in soybeans. Corn can be a little bit of a change. Just because you, the varieties are so different, so much trash. There's just a there's a lot of conversations in corn based on what you just said. Well, Michael, thank you. Thanks, Hopefully, Jeff. this video helps some of you guys that are. I guess I could swing over here. Hopefully, this video helps some of you guys that are on the fence with this combine. But I can promise you this: you and I said the same thing last year. This is one of those combines that until you're in the chair, you you might think Michael and I are. Better. And, and we're, trust me, we're telling you the same thing that we've seen, that customers are seeing like day to day. So anyway, Michael, thanks. I'm going to jump in the combine here and, uh, and and check it out a little more myself. But if you have any questions, put them in the bottom of this video. I know Michael will answer them or I'll answer them. Or we'll get you to the right person in case. Anyway, guys, thanks, guys. God bless.